So one of the um, important tasks that we do it um, once we load the data into our Power BI desktop is profiling. Not only in Power BI, once we load the data, we do the data profiling. It is always a best practice if you do the data profiling. It is one of the important um, step that you need to carry out before you start pre-processing your data. So what is pre-processing? Cleaning the data, uh, like um, do de remove deduplication, removing the duplicate records, and uh, also to remove the address the error values in case you have any errors in your columns due to uh, the fact that uh, while loading the data into your Power BI desktop, right? So when Power BI desktop, uh, if you load it, while loading it, if it assigns any error or something like that, okay? So that one and uh, duplicate records and any missing values, uh, if you have any missing values or there in your data set. Right? So before you do pre-processing, it is always a best practice uh, to do uh, the profiling of the data. So it is about, data profiling is about understanding the data at a high level, okay? So how many number of uh, valid records are there? How many number of error records are there? and how many number of empty uh, values are there in my column. Okay, so there are some uh, mandatory columns. You are not supposed to have um, any missing values, empty values. For example, the insurance, right? The insured, the age of the insured. You know, that column should, let's say you are, um, uh, you have, take for example, in the case of insurance, medical insurance. Right, each policy holder's uh, name should be there, age should be there, okay? And the age is very much important. If the age of the insured person is not there, then how can you determine the premium value? So by doing the profiling, you will get to know which all values in which column you have empty values. Is it okay if, if you can afford empty values in certain columns? Certain columns you cannot afford empty values. In case of empty values are there, how we are going to deal with it? Simple common sense is the mandatory columns if you find any missing values for, like I said, age column. Like I said, uh, you have something called insured age. And in the case of insured, medical insurance, you find a specific um, policy holders age is missing. Okay. And what you do is uh, you can try to reach out to the customer and get his age. Okay. That is, that is a simple step. There are situations you will not be able to have access to the source system data or source system bonus. Okay. In that kind of situation, you need to do some kind of data imputation, replacing the missing value with some, uh, you know, some, by taking the average of some, you know, conditional, by performing some conditional average. And if you impute the blank values with some value, with that value, it will make sense. Okay. So, so, okay, so these are the things, empty values, how many number of uh, values, how many number of records if we have empty values. Do we have any blank records? All the columns, we don't have values. Two blank records are there. So any, you know, format issues, uh, the wrong data type assigned, right? So all those things before we, you know, we get into action, first we will have to profile the data to get an understanding about your data. What the, why should I do this one? The advantage of this one is to improve the quality of your data. Supposing you have uh, some outliers are there in your data, by doing data profiling, if you uh, if you can, or if the outliers can pop up within your data, and if you can address it by doing some kind of capping or so, it will be good, right? So without doing data profiling, and if you, you, know, if you start um, creating the reports, at the time of creating the reports, if you find some blank values or any data type, wrong data type uh, assigned to a, a variable, then you will not be able to see the accurate uh, report. Your report will not be accurate. So as part of data profiling in Power BI, okay, and there are uh, three types, I know in the column level, we can do the data profiling at column level. I know the one is the three types of uh, data profiling at column level, so we can do it. One is Column quality. So this is the one displays the percentage of valid versus uh, error versus empty data. And we have something else called column distribution. This is the one will helps us to understand the number of occurrences of uh, 
the values or the categories in a categorical variable. For example, you have a region is a categorical variable. And if you see a bigger rectangular, a lengthy rectangular, just give me a second. I have some. So this is basically helps us to understand. For example, I have a region categorical variable, a specific north region. I can see a bigger bar, okay, or rectangle, okay, you know, taller rectangle. Uh, in that case, I can make out a north region, the number of occurrences of uh, uh, the north region related records or more compared to other regions. It gives me a quick idea. Okay, and the data distribution can help us to understand that one for the categorical variable. In the case of numerical variable, let's say the, even the case of numerical variable, it shows the same thing. Okay, uh, the number, number of occurrences when it comes to uh, data profiling in Power BI, that is what it says, okay? But this data distribution is different and uh, uniform distribution, that is different. The statistical distribution is different. Along with this, you can, you will get to see the statistical values, minimum, maximum, all those things you can say. Uh, and then as part of column profile, uh, you know, the column profile uh, displays a more in-depth overview of the column, right? It gives you the count of rows, and if there were errors while importing the data in the specific column, right? So it gives you that one also. You can also check the number of empty rows. And also you can you will you can see the minimum maximum maximum value within the column. Okay, so in the, in the case of a numerical variable, right? You can quickly spot any possible outliers with the help of the minimum and maximum value. Okay, and the column distribution, as I told you, right? So uh, here it shows the number of occurrences. And this is the one that uh, shows, uh, you know, it gives you a quick idea how many number of uh, error record, valid mm -hmm. records are there in the data set. I just uh, quickly get into the Power BI desktop and I'll show you. I have one day specific data here, so it's by customer.csv. It's a CSV file, I think. Yeah. The data profiling, when you do the data profiling, uh, right, so it can help us, uh, it will help you to understand the data distribution and uh, it supports us to decide uh, if you need additionally, if you need any additional data transformation or clean the data, okay? Like I said, if you find empty values, can you leave it as it is or you want to address it, right? That is a call you need to take it after discussing with your application owners or the stakeholders in your company. Look here, I just loaded uh, the sales by customer file here. Now it has been considered as a table. And if you expand this, you can see all the columns that are part of this file. And I just switched to data view to view the data that are part of this data set. And if the data volume is less, just by looking at eyeballing the data itself, we can make out. Look here, here you can see the value 12. It's a very small value and 10,232 is you know very high value compared to other values in your data set. So 12 and 320 is uh, too far and 12 and uh, 10232 is also too far. But usually we work with the huge volume of the data so in that kind of situation, just by eyeballing the data will not uh, have, will not be much helpful. That is where the data profiling option is very much helpful in the case of Power Query Editor. So these are these are the columns. This is my text data type, and this is my unit sold. These two are numeric variable, quantitative variable. This is a Boolean data type, true, false, and this is a date data type. And you can see null here, right? Somewhere here, you see null here. And here you see empty values here. Just by looking at this, we can make out there are empty values are there, right? So then why do we need, that's what, uh, if you, 
in this case it is fine but real life scenario real time scenario we are working with huge volume of data but as a beginner uh, as a learner always start with a small number of records and gradually we can increase the volume of the data look here the, the same data whatever we have seen here we are seeing it in the power query data and here we can see that the customer name is text data type and data, when it comes to data type of the columns right it has wrong i could say it, it got assigned with the correct data type okay nothing wrong here and now what i do is i just go to the view uh, ribbon i just clicked on the view ribbon and then i can see that all those things got enabled already and what i do is i will enable one after another and i just go to the view ribbon and uh, i will select uh, the column quality so very good so it tells me very clearly there are no errors in the in all these columns good but we could see empty right 11 percentage of the value in this data set I, we could see some empty values are there blank values are there fine and here also um, it shows the empty is 33 percentage 33 56 and here we don't see zero the empty is zero percentage though we have null here it shows zero percentage here but it's a text data type maybe it is a text data type and uh, in the case of text data type if you have any blank values it is considered as a empty string empty string i will show you with that view and i just uh, click on the column profile look here you can see the column profile you can you, you, with the help of the statistics we can understand how many number of um, unique values are there how many number of distinct values are in this column column wise we can see that so here if you see here empty is zero though we have one blank value here still it say it tells us you know this column has no empty value so why it is not considered as empty because it is a text data type in the case of text data type even if you have a blank value it will consider this a empty string okay that's why it is not considered as empty instead yeah, we have something else called empty string one so you need to understand the difference between empty and empty string in the case of numerical variable if you have a blank value it would have put one here okay since the text data type even if you have a null blank value it will consider the empty string empty that's why it put one here instead of here the next one is count how many number of values are there look here it uh, it took into account of the blank value also according to us it is blank value according to the power query it is a blank string hence it uh, you know it counted all the nine values so in total nine values are there in this column okay and then we have uh, minimum we don't see for text data right we cannot say minimum right so here max is true okay max is true it, it gives something uh, true here okay and if you see on the right side this is your data distribution value distribution you can see uh, you know bigger bar here right so taller bar for the baron so that means baron is appearing many times okay this customers we can say baron is a, a you know frequent visitor so he, he frequently buys products from us you can think that way okay he, he frequent customers okay and larry and others are you know all, all the others are you know the height of the bar is the length of the bar is same so the number of occurrences is only one time right so one time customer a frequent uh, customer frequent uh, purchasing frequently purchasing customers with that also you know that we also you can infer it okay you can tell story with this itself okay and uh, next one is okay now we will take a look at what is distinct and uh, unique what is the difference between these two in the case of distinct what it does is it takes into uh, so so okay distinct means the total number of different values irrespective of the fact that uh, the number of occurrences of the day value for example distinct seven here okay you exclude baron here if i exclude baron here look here uh, i just uh, sorry i select everything and exclude baron here 
So how many values are there? Six, including empty string. Six. But in our case, it shows seven. Okay, but in our case, it shows seven, okay, except barren. Okay, but including barren, seven. Though barren appears, uh, this name appears uh, more than one time, it considers uh, as a single person because barren is a single person. You know, just because he purchased more than two times, it doesn't mean, uh, you know, they, you know, use a, you know, these, you know, the, the three different persons, right? So barren is a single person, okay, and Larry and two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Right. So it, it is. It is not considering the duplicates when it comes to barren. So with this, what you can understand is the total number of different values, irrespective of the fact that how many number of times it appears in the data set. Okay. Even though uh, the name appears more than one time, it you know say since it, the, all the names are same, it kind of it. it counts it as a only one okay only one instance fine now you understood what is distinct and next one is unique unique in case of any value you know um, uh, if you find any value which is duplicating it it simply ignore that one so except barren we have six values right so so you have a barren is a barren this this name has duplicate simply it ignores the duplicate if you exclude three for out of nine, the, we are left with six. That is what you need. Okay, fine. The next one is in each sort. And even in this case, the count is six. And uh, the count is six. Uh, here we have overall nine records are there. Nine values are there. But uh, of the nine, nine records are there. Of the nine records for this column, in this column, three blank values are there. The count is ignoring the null here in the case of numeric variable. Okay, and we are left with six. Okay, and empty two and unique four. So what is unique four? Null is uh, not unique, it is duplicate. Okay, and 10 is duplicate. So it simply ignore that 15, 12, and um, six, zero, four. It's correct. Okay, and uh, zero is one appearing only one time. Minimum is 0 and maximum is 15. And it gives you the average and standard deviation, even and odd. Five values are even and uh, one value is odd. That is what we can see that the statistics. And if you see here the distribution, here it literally tells us how many number of uh, times are 10. The taller the bar tells us the occurrence of 10 is frequency distribution, right? Um, the 10 is occurring. The frequency of 10 is more. The frequency of occurrence of 10 is more compared to other values. If you see 6, only one time is there. And 12, only one time is there. But whereas 10, two times it is there. Hope you understood. It is that much simple. And sales, if I select sales here, you can see the count, 6. It ignores all the nulls, three nulls. Okay, count usually ignores the null. And even if you do uh, compute, find out the count in Excel, it is the same thing, isn't it? I don't know how many of you tried the count in Excel. It ignores the null. And error is zero. Okay, here we don't see any error. And empty is three. So one, two, three, three null values are there. And distinct seven. How many distinct values are there? All of them are different. We don't see any duplicate except null. And unique uh, six and NAN zero. NAN stands for not your number. And zero is zero. And minimum 12 maximum 10232 with this statistics we can understand uh, from minimum and maximum you see minimum is very small maximum is very high okay the average is 5378 from the average if you see the max right it is too far okay the average and maximum if you see too far and there is a outlier so hence this value is outlier what is outlier outlier is something like uh, unusually very high value not necessarily it should be and uh, not necessarily the unusually very high value is called um, outlier. Unusually very small value is also called as outlier. In this case, uh, 12 is outlier. Both the 12 and minimum and maximum. So, and don't ask me 
uh, if minimum uh, and maximum uh, in any case can i say it is an outlier if the minimum is very small and then maximum is very high right and if you see the distance between these two is too high then it is kind of a outlier but still we cannot say outlier because there is a separate formula for outlier uh, that is different the statistics part data science will talk about so anyhow uh, in the data science we will do some kind of capping and the as part of the machine learning we do that uh, we have something called q1 uh, q3 okay but uh, with this statistics you can get a fair amount of idea just by looking at this data you can understand 1023 it is uh, you know compared to other values to it is too far okay the distance is too far especially the, from the average your average is 5378 from the average it is too far okay and that's what we can see that here uh sorry from the average it is so maximum is too far 5000 it is too far there is some kind of outlier here okay let it be there but uh, you know each values are occurring you know only one time we don't see any duplicate fine next one is the active the same thing we can see here count is 6 and mt is 3 and uh, here mt is 3 and uh, uh, we have um, distinct is 3 and unique is 1 and true so what is unique here in this case false the true true since true is appearing more than one time duplicate null is appearing more than one time duplicate so unique values only one false right so that's it and then uh, you have something called distinct three so distinct will take into account of each unique value so true one time it will take though it appears multiple time and false it takes into account and null it takes into account three okay distinct three and that is what we can see it here and the error is zero and count is six why count is six here we have nine values are there it is supposed to ignore all the null values right here uh, there is some problem here here the count is six here the number of uh, six here okay one uh, two Three, four, five, and uh, it is taking okay. So true is considered as one here, and one, two, three, four, okay. And um, here empty is three. Okay, count is something wrong here. Five, six. There is something wrong here because uh, I I could see some problem with the latest version, and uh, I covered almost you know. Uh, 82 batches there is something wrong here okay and mt3 here we could see mt3 no it is not 3 and we have 3 uh, 4 5 right something wrong here there is some bug in it okay we we'll have to check with uh, i'll probably i'll post it in the microsoft uh, site okay community site we'll see what uh, problem is because i remember uh, you know in the previous versions we never came across this kind of thing and uh, okay here unique is one and uh, true is three look here true is considered as a one okay and false is uh, considered as uh, you know one right so false appears only one time true appears three times number of occurrence okay and here unique is one uh, in this case false is one only thing is the mt is supposed to be 4 5 but it shows only three and distinct it shows three okay when it comes to distinct correct the only problem is with the mt here mt and count but if you uh, if you add these two three right it comes around 6 plus 3 9 but it say it, it takes into account of um, what 6 is count 3 4 so basically yeah sorry sorry count will ignore the null right that is what the rule i said so 1 2 3 4 it should it display four here uh, in this case um, it is a boolean data type right so it still something wrong here okay and um, this is wrong and this is wrong mt is also not probably i will post and come back on this and then we have something called data bar it is a text data type we will convert that as a uh, this way what i will do is i will just here we have null value
So let us first check this one. If I data bar, okay. So here also, if you take a look at here, so we can see the count is six. We have six values are there, but we have uh, many values are there. Look here, here the count is. So what happened here? One second, let me just check. <laughs> when you refresh it, it is showing nine, right? Earlier it was showing six. So something is happening. Look here, now it is showing correctly, right? So if you go up and come here, it is getting refreshed. Maybe some confusion with the refresh. Yeah, now it is showing correctly. Count is uh, nine. We have total nine values are there. But here, even in this case, it is uh, not ignoring the null value. Okay, okay, let it be there. In the case of Boolean, it is considering null. And error is zero. Okay, fine. And empty is five. Perfect. Empty is five. Okay, and distinct is three. Yes, we have true, false, and null. Okay, and unique is one, false is one, true is three, very good. And false is one in this game, very good. Here, how many number of time true is appearing pauses? And now it got refreshed. Earlier it was showing six, something wrong here, okay? So if, if, if you, see this is basically, you know, uh, we have to use um, some common sense. That's all I just, uh, kind of a trial and error, okay? It's not a more than common sense, it's a trial and error. I just selected it here. Now it, it got refreshed with some correct value, okay. And in this case, look here, empty is three here now. When it's sold three, three nulls are the three empty values. And here we have total nine values are there. So nine, okay, count is nine. Uh, okay, it is not ignoring the null. For the text data type, you remember that. If you have empty string, it still consider that one. Even if you have null, it consider that also. Only in the case of numeric data type, even in the case of numeric data, something strange here. Just three days back only installed a newer version. Okay, in all the cases, it takes into account of the count. Okay, and the empty is three. Everything is correct except the count. Count is same, you know, let me do one. If you happens to have this issue, what you do is you just go to the home ribbon, being in the Power Query Editor, being inside the Power Query Editor, who select the home ribbon, and then what you do is refresh preview. And then you just check here. Okay. So count is nine, count is nine. Whether it's a text data type or numeric data type, uh, the count is taking into account of the null value also. Earlier it was showing six, isn't it, wasn't it? So now it shows uh, this one, filtered values, nine and nine, all are nine. And, uh, but uh, except count, rest of them are showing the correct thing, okay? Okay, so this is what uh, I think. And next I just go and select the column distribution. So we have another option called column distribution. I selected this one. So you know, when the moment when I selected that one, just beneath this column name, you can see this thing, the distribution. Okay, and seven distinct and uh, six unique value. Okay, seven distinct and the six unique value. But here it shows something else. Sorry, this is for this one. Okay, and if I select this one, yes, seven distinct and six unique. Look here, seven distinct, six unique, it shows here. But if you hover the cursor here, which means if you keep the cursor somewhere here, we can find something like this. It tells us the same thing, the valid error empty. Uh, look here, the, if you keep the cursor here, you'll get it. And you, somewhere if you keep it here, right? If you keep this over here, we'll get the value empty. So how many percentage of uh, records you have valid? How many, and then remove empty. 
Okay, just next to that, you can see three dot. This is called ellipse. When you click on this, you can see copy. You know, this is called your context menu. In the context menu, you have different options. Keep errors. In case you have errors, you don't want to delete it. You, you select this option, keep errors. Keep duplicates. If you have duplicates, let it be there. And if you want to remove the duplicates, you can click on it. Duplicates will get removed. Remove empty, remove errors, and replace errors. In case any errors are there, you just click on this. And then you specify the value here. In place of error, replace zero or something like that, okay? Fine. So you can eliminate duplicate also with this one. By holding the control key, you can select more than one column. Look here, you can select more than one column. You need to hold the control key and then click on the columns that you want to select it together. So in this case, I selected four columns. And if you keep the cursor over here and remove empty here, if you see here, I don't have any uh, empty record. So here, if I say remove empty, it removes all the empty, you know, wherever the null was there, it removed it. Yeah, null, 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 right? So it is not the right way of doing it, okay? But usually what we do is um, we address these kind of duplicate issues um, in different way, okay? How the different way we filter the values, okay? And uh, in the case of DAX, we use uh, some filtering criteria using which we will exclude that values, okay? But uh, here the data profiling, uh, you know, just give us an idea. I know how many number of distinct values are there, how many number of unique values are there. Okay, any duplicate values are there with that you can say. So in this case, we don't, let's say you have something called primary key column. The primary key column, you're not supposed to have duplicate. Uh, but we, by seeing that, let's say in the primary key column, customer key column, overall nine records are there. In the customer key column, the distinct should be nine, unique should be nine. Okay, there should not be any so by looking at this, we can quickly make out, okay, we don't have any duplicate here, especially in the case of primary key column. So, so in that way, it will be helpful. And um, that's all, okay. So I just select the file and uh, I just say close. So we did not do anything. So I just simply close it. Okay, just to uh, summarize, as part of data profiling, we just uh, explored uh, the three different options. One is the column quality and column distribution and column profile. Column quality was giving us the percentage of valid versus error versus empty data. In case of any error in your columns, it can help us to pinpoint. Okay, you can, by looking at there, you can address it. If you don't address the error, you will not be able to uh, load the data correctly here. For example, you did some kind of data transformation. While doing the data transformation, you encountered some, you know, it encountered some error. With that error data, if you try to load it, it will not work, okay? And this is, column quality is very much helpful to pinpoint, do we have any error, or uh, errored uh, values are there, or any empty data is there, okay? Other thing is the column distribution. Column distribution helps, you know, displays the data distribution. With that, we can understand which value in our categorical variable or categorical category column, uh, you know, have, we have more number of occurrences. And next one is the column profile. Right? So that is the one gives us a statistic like minimum, maximum, and standard deviation, average, all those information we can set. With that, we can understand, are there any outliers? Like I said, in the case of sales, you could see this value, uh, you know, is too big compared to other values. Okay, it is too far from the average also. So uh, this is kind of an outlier here. Okay, so now the question is, uh, is it okay if I have an outlier in my data set? You need to check with your stakeholder. Uh, can I, uh, is this uh, due to typo or is this a valid outlier? If they say valid data only, then we need to do some kind of capping. So anyhow, uh, uh, I know it is not required at this moment. Okay, I'll discuss this later about the capping and all. Okay, 
for that you need to understand your something called uh, quartile 3 quartile 1 statistics part i am not going to tell you all those things at this moment you have discussed uh, column quality column distribution column profile that is enough and uh, to outlier it helps us to understand outlier okay you check with the customer is it a valid value or in case valid value you can you know include it let it be there okay because when you use scatter plot visual you can see it there also so it can help the management or you know the senior folks to understand yes we are some outlier there is an exceptional case let it be there 